Now I've left all of the mechanical parts sitting in petrol overnight. This one I've I've cleaned up a little bit more, even out of petrol that had a few stains on it. And I've just used um, pieces of, of emery cloth um, here and I've just put some petrol on it and cleaned it up. So that's now nice and smooth. The mechanism moves quite quite freely. So there's no problem with that. All of the sconge inside has been taken out. Now, just to show, it's a bit hard perhaps, just showing how this, what this does, this little spring clip, in its down position, the edges of that there, what is this? They just sit on this little bar, so they just hang on the edge of it. And that bar there, in, in the centre of the semaphore, sits on this front face. So what I've done, once again with some emery, is to clean that up, just to make sure there's nothing there that, that catches. And what I'll eventually do is just put a little bit of thin grease on that surface there and also in the surface underneath the spring there. So what happens in its neutral position it just sits there. Then when the semaphore comes up, because it's pivoting at a point lower down, semaphore comes up, this goes down and then that slides up into the top there. So it's handy to have all of this clean. Now in there I still need to clean a little bit more. There's a little bit of sconge in there. Um, pull that out with a screwdriver just so it doesn't get in the way of the operation of the arm. So there's a little bit more cleaning to do in there. Not much. Make sure there's no sconge in there. I'll put a little bit of grease on the pin here. And as I say, when it's in the in the down position, that should be the pin should be just catching on the bottom of the, the spring arm. Now with that bump stop at the bottom the stop that stops the um, semaphore coming right in, that um, has an influence on how this comes up. If it sits in too far, the, the amount of catches on this spring is um, probably not as good as it should be. So what it's got to do is that that bump stop at the bottom needs to be pulled out so this is sitting more erect so when it comes up it goes easily over the top so uh, it is sort of one minor adjustment you can make the cleanliness is the main thing making sure all this is clean now I've still got to clean the this I've cleaned up. The only part that the um, mechanical piece, pieces touch is the center here. You can see a score line in there. That's where this little ball here slides up. So once again I'll put a um, thin layer of grease in there. That just slides up there. I've also cleaned that up with emery just to make sure there's nothing there that catches so everything's free the rest of it doesn't matter but you don't see any of this although I have cleaned up some of the rust and so on the only bit you need to be mindful of that has to be clean is down the bottom here I'll do that with a little bit of coarse uh, paper that's where the earthing um, T 
tab sits. So it's got to be nice and clean. Make sure all your earthing points are, are clean. Get all the oxidisation off. So that's not a problem. This is the earthing piece that was sitting in some petrol, so I'll just give that a, a quick uh, run down with a bit of emery. Top doesn't really matter, but I'll clean that as well. It's the bottom that sits on the in there. So it's the bottom is the main point that's got to be clean. It's a little bit dirty there. Clean that up. The outside up here doesn't matter, it just looks better. It's a bit clean. The piece that does matter is the internal. This is where the um, connector goes. So I've got a small reptile file. Make sure that's all nice and clean inside. Okay, that's right. The pin. This is the... Not the pin, this is the bush that goes in the centre here. Now that should be free. And that wasn't free. So you have to make sure that everything's clean inside this, in this housing here. If it's not, the arm's not going to move freely. Now they say they oil that just with a dab of oil. There's a, you might be able to see it, there's a felt strip up the top here. And under that felt strip, there's a small hole that goes into this housing. Um, put a, a drop of oil on there. Or well, what I've done with the other one is put a very thin smear of grease. And I'll probably put a bit of oil on the top anyway. Just to make sure it stays clean. And free. Now, that probably I'll just do a, a small run over with a piece of emery. It should just pop in there and... Okay, that moves quite freely now. Both ends. That wasn't moving freely at all. So it drops down, that's good. So that's clean. As I said, the brass pin goes through the centre, but it doesn't spin on that brass pin. So that's a, a fairly tight fit. What I'll do is just clean up the end here where the punch is bent it over a little bit. Um, don't want to clean it up too much because when this goes into the housing, it's actually got to um, seat up in there. So I'll just take the edges off with a bit of emery. The burrs mainly. Yeah. And that will tap through there. It's uh, it's not meant to be a loose fit. 
So that's okay. These are just the screws they cleaned up all right. Now the coil. I've got a bit of wax and grease remover here. And that's that bump stop I told you about. Um, on my ones, and it's probably no different on other old ones, is that these go hard, and also where it can, where it was, where it was in operation, it's actually dented this, so it's not as round as it used to be. So this is what happens. This comes back and hits on that. But if you bend this up a little bit, it pulls this out a little, little bit uh, more and hooks that that pin under the, uh, the spring. So that's what um, you need to do. And that's better done when it's, it's out like this. Doesn't need to go much, just a slight bend. Have to clean up this. This is where the that's not underneath. Clean that up. That's where the earth strap. Okay, that's right. This doesn't matter because this sits on some insulation on top of that. So that's not meant to be that contact's not meant to be connecting to that uh, that base there, so it doesn't have to be clean. Inside this has to be clean, so I'll just do that with a Right there. A bit of cosmetic cleaning wouldn't go astray. Now, internally, it, I ran the plunger down inside here it was free but there's a little bit of catchiness so uh, I've got wax and grease remover in this so I'll just put a bit of that down in there clean that out now the magnet I've almost finished cleaning up within externally as bad as much as I want to go. I certainly don't want to risk damaging the, the coating on the coils. Internally I've uh, already had some cloth inside this to try and clean it out and it's now now quite good. So there's quite freedom of movement in there. So there will be no obstruction, it will go up and drop straight down, so that's not a problem anymore. So that's all clean. So all that's left is now to, to reassemble. Now I uh, will start that and I'll film that process as well, but just before I, I do that, the semaphore, you know, it's now all cleaned up, that polished up uh, quite okay, it, I mean it doesn't have to be completely shiny, it just needs to be clean, which it is. The um, original bulb, it's here, and went inside that small festoon, 
can't really read what sort of size bulb that was. Um, wouldn't have been a very, very strong one. I'm going to change that with a an LED bulb. Now I've got a selection of LED bulbs, different types you can get. Um, this one will fit in, but it's only a, a 180 degree bulb. So if you look at that, um, there's nothing on the rear. So that sort of bulb is good for an internal light. So it's only shining one way. I've just um, received another order of bulbs. These are 360 degree LED bulbs. Um, they're about the same length, they're a bit thicker. I'm hoping they'll fit in. They should do. Yeah, they'll fit in okay. Um, so they're the ones I'll put in. They're, th they're um, 360 degree illumination, so they'll provide um, the right amount of light for this type of application. Uh, it's got to shine both ways, so that's fine. Um, so that's ready to assemble. The only thing I'm, I will do before I do that is I'll put a bit of solder around on that. Now I've cleaned that up. There's bare metal there, but it, it was rusted. So I'll just run a little bead of solder over that so I've got a good contact for the LED bulb. But um, having said that, it's now ready to start to reassemble and uh, as all of these repair manuals you you get say uh, assembly is the reverse of uh, disassembly well that's you know, sometimes easier said than done but this is uh, not all that complicated to get back together um, the, uh, the parts this part just slides back into there. You've got to get it forward enough so the, the bolt will go through and, and tie up that. The bottom here I've cleaned up so I've got a good earthing point. That one goes underneath. That goes over the top. Okay. So that's the earth contact there. This one here, this separates this um, piece here, separates the the earth from the the active wire. So that goes underneath this tab. Goes under that. It goes over the top of that. And it's a case of dropping the screw back in and tightening that back up. Okay. Now, you recall I I said that when the when the semaphore is sitting in place, it hinges through there, and when it's in its closed position, it sits down against this bump stop at the bottom here. See that? Now these bump stops, I've noticed that on most of uh, my sets that I've got here. The bump stop with continued use over the years has actually got a, a little dent or a worn away area so it means that instead of the this rubber stop being higher it's it's flattened out and when that flattens out that means this this bottom end is sitting exaggerated here further in now with that further in, 
because the, the hinge point is there, with that being further in, it means this bar here is pushed further away from the little little hook section here. So it it's got to sit on that on that bar and hopefully sit so it's more than half half the diameter of that bar. If it's sitting very close to the outside edge there, there's a good chance it's just going to catch and not not operate f uh, freely. So it's got to be in enough so it when it hinges it slides under the this spring loaded or call it a hook and then goes up into the down. And it will go up into the recess, and you can see that little recess in here. Well, I can do that. So I'll use the nail. Show you what I mean. So it sits like that in the closed position. If it sits down there, it just makes it a little bit bit harder to come up. But if it sits a little bit further up, by that being pushed out a bit more on the on the mount here. When the plunger goes down that trips up into there. That doesn't go up, that goes down. The semaphore goes up. So the adjustment, if there is what you call an adjustment, is just by made by just pushing that up a little bit to account for the, the wear on the, the stop. Now I suppose you could replace the stop with a nice new full stop and you wouldn't need to do that, but uh, I'm certainly not going to do that. I'm just going to bend it up a fraction and then that will solve the problem. So uh, that's what you need to do during the assembly process. When I do reassemble, the hardest bit is going to be get to get this to go in, this pin. Um, basically it only goes in one side. It goes in, and I think I, I did mention that one end is flattened out. It's got a little closed end on it. This end's got a small hole and it was, it was peened over. Now I've ground that off. But this other end is a very tight fit in the hole there, so it tends to hold itself. So you, you can get it through the first hole, but getting it to go into the second becomes a problem. The other thing too is that when you've pulled them apart, you tend to spread these out a bit, and they don't need to be spread. The you can see the, the slop in there. So what I've, I've done on the other one that I've uh, refurbished is to squeeze these together. Try not to go out of shape. It's a bit too far. Enough to get that a much tighter fit. Now I just pushed it in too far. Uh, I'll need to get a pair of pliers to do it probably, but yeah, I'll need to get a pair of pliers. Just ha have it so each edge of that that housing there is a snug fit. Now that's not snug; that's just too tight. And it's if I force that apart, I can force it apart to do it, but then it it tightens up the the ability to swing so it just has to have a a clearance not a sloppy clearance but a uh, a nice loose clearance so the arm is able to drop up and down okay I'll bend it so it has um, a nice snug fit there it is it fits a little bit of movement maybe I can squeeze it a little bit not too much Okay, 
that's probably as tight as it needs to go. Now, <coughs> seeing I've got to put the arm in, what I need to do is to, first of all, put a little bit of lubrication on before I forget. Just a little bit of grease on that. Because that will be sliding up and over the, the plunger. Okay, that's done. The other thing I'll do is to put the cover on. Now I've slid a bulb in. This is an LED bulb and it's um, polarity sensitive, so you need to check that before you uh, screw things up. Now I have checked that, so I'll just put the strip over the top. thing I'll do is check it to make sure that the bulb is right. Okay, that's right. Put that over there. Now, assembling it. The other thing you need a little bit of grease on of course is the, the plunger. So it needs it on the face, because that's where the the uh, semaphore bar runs up and down there and also in the middle there so that's done you don't need any on the face of that that needs to be fairly clean so it drops freely the other thing you need a little bit of grease on <coughs> little ball at the back there As I've said before, that ball runs up and down the center there, so I'll put a small smear of grease just on that. Right, now, this is where you need a few hands. Just putting it together, but almost forgot I've got to put this in. This is the bush in the center. Now that is normally oiled but um, I'll just put a smear of grease on it. Once again not a lot. Now Got the insulation strip under the under that. This is what I glanced at that. Something else I've got to do. Put that in. Put the plunger in the coil. This gets a bit fiddly here. <coughs> so now you've got to try and get this in. You've got to feed the wire around the plunger so it comes out here which is easier said than done. This has got to feed up under there. That's got to go down there. And then you have to try and feed this pin in through the bush.
which is all right if it lines up. And you've got the spring pushing the other way, pushing it down, so this makes it a bit hard to line the bush up. Okay, I've managed to put the pin back in okay. It's um, all operational, as you can see. So they can be refurbished, providing the, the coil is not broken.